she quoted that we know that the integrity commission has been putting out in the media who has signed the code that they have put out and who hasn't signed and instead of requesting a formal meeting with either the cabinet or the parliamentary body they have gone all over the place with shaming approach wait a minute hey my people bless up bless up welcome back to the channel it's your girl anissa bell rose blessings one and all thanks to all the new subscribers thanks to the returning subscribers if you're new to the channel subscribe turn the post notification bell on so you won't miss an upload from me on the road to 5k my people help me to get there so in this one minister legal and constitutional affairs marlene malahu fort who is the first member of the oldest administration to come out and speak accusing the integrity commission of seeking to embarrass the cabinet for failing to sign the leadership code of conduct when I hear these people, right? So Integrity Commission has asked the head of the government and the members of his cabinet to sign the code of conduct for more than six months. And majority of them still has not signed. She was speaking about this in her remarks at the Integrity Commission's Act. Remember, I did a video earlier and was telling you guys that you know they had a secret meeting so apparently she was a part of that meeting too and you know warmington was talking you, know, you can check out that video there you know in the description i put the link so you can check out that video there right people the media wasn't allowed there however they got some you know insight of what went down she quoted that we know that the integrity commission has been putting out in the media who has signed the code that they have put out and who hasn't signed and instead of requesting a formal meeting with either the cabinet or the parliamentary body they have gone all over the place with shaming approach so she has said you know the integrity commissions are do it just for shame you know the andrew oldness led government in particular right and it was stated back then that you know PNP opposition leader Mark Golden and a few of them have signed the code of conduct already. She further on went to saying, I am just looking at the thing from a point of view which says, let us look at the substance separate from an undesirable approach that has been taken. What do we want from codes of conduct? What properly is their place? Because this is an extremely topical issue at this time. And then, how should they be treated? So, quote-unquote, what she I try to say right there for my people? What me get from that is she trying to say what is the need of the code of conduct. Because when she say what do we want from codes of conduct? Or you mean what do they want from code of conduct? We need um, things in place to see how we to conduct ourselves as members of parliament. What are the requirements um, on a job um, description? All of that. Being truthful, being honest, working with integrity, serving the people. Them. That is what they want from the codes of conduct. When you comment down below and tell me what you think about she asking that question, my people. The article also stated that, you know, Mark Golden were also invited to sign the code of conduct, which, you know, he did. To commit to leader, to be honest, accountable and open in fulfilling their public duties. To date, neither the prime minister nor any member of his cabinet has linked the document that invites them to subscribe to what is also termed the seven principles of public life. So I'll know none of them. And Mark Golden, as well as 10 members of his shadow cabinet, have signed the code of conduct already. So seeing that she's coming now to say that, you know, integrity commissions are trying to embarrass them. No make no sense to me. In April, Robert Morgan, the Minister of Responsibility for Information, 
was asked if the Prime Minister or any member of the Cabinet has signed the Leadership Code of Conduct, and if not, why not? He told the journalists during a post-Cabinet press briefing that no Code of Conduct has been presented to me to sign. So I'm only a talk about himself. He made it clear that as a Cabinet Minister, he has not been presented with a Code of Conduct. He quoted that I am pretty much unable to comment on a code of conduct that I have never seen or had any discussion with anyone about. So how could it be that the People's National Party opposition leader as well as the other members in the lower house have gotten the code of conduct? And remember that he also stated back then that each person will get that letter individually. So why hasn't Nobody has seen it other than those PMP uh, members. You see, say it not add up, people. It's not adding up. But yet still, they sign for them to get this massive pay hike. And then it's after the pay hike and the people um, are come out and are make nice. Then they want to table up a code of conduct. They want to table up responsibilities and, and, and accountability framework after the fact that they've grant themselves massive pay hikes. Reading to all like my people. It is stated that on November the 15, 2022, the Integrity Commission emailed a letter along with the Leadership Code of Conduct document to the office of the Prime Minister. A hard copy was hand delivered on the same day so them get email plus them get a hard copy them get paper with the same information that was in the email but yet still the minister of information robert morgan said that none of their side has seen this code of conduct so more know if you are the minister of information and you know see it then Maybe you need to be removed so that somebody else can take up that post who will see all these emails and have these information on hand to deliver to the other members of parliament, if so be the case. Talk up in the comment section, my people, and tell me what you think about this. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Meanwhile, fraud hit Stocks and Securities Limited request to overturn a Supreme Court injunction which blocks it from doing anything with its assets has ended in a failure at one of the first hurdles the court of appeal yesterday refused an application by ssl and trustee kadion campbell for extension of time to file a notice and grounds of appeal against the decision in favor of regulator so you know here we are going, my people. Them hit with fraud, rub up over 39 clients of their money. Usain Bolt being the one that was hit the hardest. And the court made a ruling for them not to be able to do anything at all with them assets. And them want to overturn that. They want to make an appeal for overturn that. SSL you know, you know, you know, must be sick in the brain. Work out and find the ways of paying back all these 39 clients, including Honorable Usain Bolt. All the clients need their money. We're not going to stop saying that. We're not going to stop vouching for them to get back their money. So instead, I want to make ways and means to try to get back the people their money. I want to run in a court every minute for the appeal. For the appeal. But people want to talk and tell me if they write it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Run go over to my other platform, Instagram and Facebook, and follow me over there at Anissa Bell Rose. Check out the YouTube store. Check out the membership of the channel. To become a member, you have to join, pay a small fee per month, and you'll get a lot of benefits by becoming a member of the channel. We also do notification shout out in each video. To be a part of that, you have to be the first to comment and like the video and you'll be featured in the following video to come. This notification shout out goes to
Eva Lynn Meikle. So big up yourself, Eva Lynn Meikle. Thanks for all the support. Each and every one of my subscribers, new viewers, come on board, subscribe on the road to 5K. Stay tuned for more videos. Big up on yourself. Bless up.